Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm answering one of the most common questions I get. Why did I choose pharmacy over medicine? Yes, I'm going to go into details on this topic today and make sure to stay to the end where I share the most important step to take when making your decision. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jessica Louie and I'm a board certified critical care pharmacist, associate professor and entrepreneur. On this channel, I love helping people find confidence to find meaning beyond a job title and let go of burnout. We talk about simplifying it, we talk about financial freedom and we talk about how we paid off massive student loan debt as well. Make sure to watch those videos and get your resources linked below. Now, before we get into all of the reasons why I chose pharmacy over medicine and what questions to ask yourself to make an informed decision about your value systems and what will work best for your lifestyle, let me give you a little background about my journey into pharmacy. Now, hopefully you've also watched my introduction videos as well, but many of you might not know that I actually was getting interested into the pharmacy profession before ninth grade in high school. So many years ago, and you know my family value system was we're going to choose a profession and a career path before we choose a university and college to go to so that we ensure that whatever university or college we go to has that career path option has that degree option available to us and this was greatly instilled by my parents including my Chinese father so um, it was a process where we did need to choose early in our life and make this informed decision. So starting in ninth grade, I started to look into different healthcare professions. And I already knew that there were some that may not mesh very well with my personality and some of the things I liked. So um, in ninth grade, you know, I was flipping through different brochures and actually my mom was the one who found the flyer and the brochure on pharmacy. And they had been really recruiting in the early 2000s for pharmacists. There was a big shortage in the United States for pharmacists that was predicted to last the next 10 to 15 years. So it was a profession that, you know, my parents, had been aware of. None of my family directly had worked in the area necessarily, but um, they were aware of it. And it was something that they did inspire me to look into and to shadow in. So I ended up shadowing pharmacists in pharmacy, both in the community setting, you know, one of those traditional independent pharmacies that you probably used to see a lot on the corner of different plazas and things. And then I also shadowed a little bit in hospital pharmacy as well. And this helped me make an informed decision before I went into applying to both my undergraduate and graduate programs. In addition to this, even before ninth grade, I actually watched a lot of medical shows growing up. It was something my twin sister and I used to love doing with my mom. And in the 1990s, maybe you're familiar with some of the TV shows, two of the ones that were really popular that we really enjoyed watching together were ER and Chicago Hope. And they had different characters in them. Back then, it was much more focused on the medical decisions and the patients in those medical shows nowadays. Um, in 2022, you probably see a lot of medical shows that are intertwined with the physician and the staff lives and their personal lives, um, and me a little bit less about the patient focus areas. So it was something that we loved watching. I would literally cover my eyes and be like, I'm not watching this. It's way too much blood. It's too much trauma, too much gore. And my twin sister sitting next to me just loved those different types of scenes and getting into the show in that way. And that is one of the reasons that it led her into the medicine field um, and into a partial surgery field as well. So going through the process of growing up with medical shows and also finding pharmacy as one of my options early on in high school, I did narrow down down my healthcare options to either pharmacy or medicine. So the PharmD, doctor of pharmacy program, or the MD, the doctor of allopathic medicine type of programs. And obviously, you know that I did choose my PharmD uh, pharmacy profession, and my twin sister chose the MD, the medical field instead. And there are a lot of other healthcare professional programs out there. I'm not going to go into details and all of those different options as well, but there were certain reasons why I chose not to pursue them that I'm not going to talk about today. So overall, I made my final decision about what career path I was going to take before 11th grade. Then we did choose to tour a lot of different universities and colleges. I grew up in the Midwest. We toured some there, and then we toured a lot in California and um, a few other ones on the east coast 
And I applied to undergraduate programs intentionally with the intent that I would go to an undergraduate program that had a pharmacy school, that had the doctor of pharmacy program. And I actually was admitted into USC School of Pharmacy, University of Southern California, that is in Los Angeles. And I was actually admitted into their pharmacy program from high school. Um, it was a program that was around in that time. And I completed my bachelor degree first at USC. And then I went on to the doctor of pharmacy program at USC afterwards. Okay, now that you know a little background about you know, how I got into the pharmacy field, let's go through some characteristics of why I chose pharmacy over medicine and some of the questions I asked myself before we get into what's the best step to take to really find the program that is right for you. The first one, you know, that when we're comparing pharmacy to medicine is, you know, a lot of times we already know this in medicine, there typically are more procedures, more surgery options to go into. And no matter what field you go into in medicine, you always will train in some of those fields. So no matter what field you go into, you know, medical students are trained to deliver a baby and they're trained in the OR and with surgical skills and things. Whereas in pharmacy, you know, that interaction is a little bit different. We're using a lot of our clinical thinking skills and we're not actually performing procedures on patients. So that was one of the things that I really did consider. And like I said earlier, watching a lot of medical shows in the 1990s, I did realize that procedures and surgery was probably not the best fit for me. Yes, I probably had some of those skills. I had really great hand-eye coordination. I was a gymnast growing up and I also played piano growing up. So I felt like I had that good hand-eye coordination for procedures or surgeries, but it actually was not only the blood part because I can you know, look at blood without a problem. I'm an ICU trained pharmacist, but actually it was more of the smell in the OR and the surgery centers that really got to me. And this is where making sure that you know what you're getting yourself into and you've experienced these firsthand is really important. So I actually did have opportunities to shadow in the OR surgery centers. Um, and this, the smell of cutting through skin is something that just not for me. Um, so being able to experience that um, and get those experiences early on in high school to make that informed decision was really helpful. The next reason that I considered pharmacy over medicine is the work-life alignment and the flexibility of each career path. Yes, there's flexibility and can have great work alignment or a great work integration in either field, depending on how you set it up for your own lifestyle. But back in high school, when I was looking into this, you know, I was looking at, you know, our physician colleagues and physician friends that I was shadowing versus some of the pharmacist friends. And yes, they're both high paying fields at the end of the day, um, but it is a little bit different type of work typically. So, you know, if you are going in for more shift work where you are there from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. versus if you're going in and you don't know how late you're staying because you're the surgeon on the case or the anesthesiologist on the case, can be very different type of work, right? Or if you're on call a lot and you're on call to deliver babies or to do something specific related to medicine, it can be a lot different environment compared to a pharmacist where yes, we have shift work and yes, we could stay late um, to make sure we're taking care of patients. But at the end of the day, usually we can pass off that workload to the next pharmacist who's coming on. And there's not very many fields where we're gonna be paged and on call a lot in the pharmacy world um, for the most part, at least. Whereas in the physician world, it's much more likely you could be on call, you could be called in in the middle of the night, different types of work like that. So for work life and flexibility, that could play a role in your decision making process. The other role that it can also play is the flexibility in terms of in pharmacy, you know, postgraduate training is not required at this time. Yes, there's other opportunities for board certification and things, but you're trained more as a generalist. Whereas in medicine, you are trained as a specialist. It, it is a field where you go into a residency and fellowship program for internal medicine or for OBGYN or for radiology, right? And you don't necessarily jump fields. You know, you won't see a radiologist jump into being a surgeon or a radiologist jump into being an OBGYN, right? They would have to go back and complete that residency or fellowship program for that credential. Whereas in pharmacy, 
there's a lot more flexibility of changing within the field to learn on the job type of field. So, you know, if you do want to jump around or if you do want to have more per diem work versus part-time work versus full-time work, it might be a little bit easier in the pharmacy world to do that compared to the medicine world where it might not be as advantageous or you might not be able to keep up some of your credentials if you're not working enough hours or seeing enough patients per year in that certain specialty field. Next stop in the decision-making process was the years of schooling and the years of training that each field involves. So you already know my journey in pharmacy where I spent nine years training into my field, spent three years for my bachelor degree, which could have been four years. I decided to cut it down to three years. Four years my doctor of pharmacy degree. Most programs are four years. There are some that are accelerated for three years. And then I went on to pursue postgraduate training for two years in critical care. And that was an optional thing in the pharmacy world. So I spent nine years total. Um, The minimum that most people will spend training to their doctor of pharmacy program is six years. So for some people who choose not to get a bachelor degree, they may choose to complete two years of prerequisite courses in the undergraduate setting, and then four years for their doctor of pharmacy degree. So six years minimum is usually what we consider the minimum amount of time you'll be in schooling and training for pharmacy. Whereas in the medicine world, it usually is, you know, longer, sometimes significantly longer, sometimes just a little bit longer. So our medicine colleagues, whether they're the doctor of allopathic medicine or doctor of osteopathic medicine or MDs versus our DOs, they typically spend four years for their bachelor degree, four years for their doctorate degree, and then a minimum of three years in postgraduate training, usually at least three years in residency, and sometimes residency is longer than three years, and then sometimes Times fellowship is between one and three years after that. So most you know, physicians will spend at least three years postgraduate training upwards of eight to nine years. So my twin sister spent 12 years training into her specialty field, and my husband spent 14 years training into his specialty field. And there's actually other specialties where you train for 16 or 17 years. And you might also get a combine PhD with your training. It really depends. So it definitely is usually a longer training process. And that does need a way into your decision-making model of, you know, how you want to live your life over the next 10 to 15 years, because that's basically how long you're going to be training uh, in those different fields and where you see your life going. Because sometimes we do need to sacrifice a few things during that training process. And I've talked about this on the YouTube channel before of some of the things I decided to invest my time and energy into in my 20s so that I could have a different life in my 30s. And that included not getting married, that included not having kids in my 20s, right? And those were intentional decisions and I'm very happy with those decisions, but it's not always for everyone. So I do think that it is important to talk about. Yes, those things are possible when you're training into medicine or pharmacy. It's just, you know, a different lifestyle and different priority compared to your education. Next stuff is the postgraduate training opportunities. And I touched upon this a little bit, but in pharmacy currently they are optional. Yes, I do recommend that people do complete postgraduate training opportunities, whether it's residency or fellowship. And I talk about that on my YouTube channel quite often and as a professor to my students. Whereas in medicine, they are required. And yes, in some ways, maybe you could just do your intern year um, in medicine and then go work in certain settings. But for the majority of people, they will spend three to eight years in their residency fellowship training opportunities and their required programs become credentialed in the United States. Next up is what your interests are and how you specialize you want to become in either program, whether it's in pharmacy or medicine. Yes, as I've talked about, you can be a specialist in either one and you become board certified in either one. I'm board certified in critical care pharmacy. That's what BCCCP stands for after my name and the credentials you see on LinkedIn and everything. And it's something that, you know, I'm able to become board certified actually in multiple areas as a pharmacist. They don't limit how many areas you can become board certified in. Yes, there are certain prerequisites you need to complete. Whereas in medicine, it's typically really unusual to become board certified in more than one or two areas that you're an expert in. You know, that's because the board certification process means you've completed postgraduate training opportunities, whether that's four years for OBGYN or you know, four to six years for radiology or the number of years for anesthesiology or neurosurgery or whatever it might be. And you're usually 
you know, board certified in your specialty field. Um, and then maybe you also have an added credential in a subspecialty. So a subspecialty could mean that in OBGYN, you're a generalist and you're certified in that. And you're also specialty certified in reproductive endocrinology, uh, infertility type of medicine, uh, different things like that. So you could have, you know, two certifications, but they're typically in related fields. Um, yes, sometimes you could have gone through residency for both ENT and then residency for general surgery, or you could have gone through uh, residency for general surgery and then residency for trauma or you know, general surgery and then burn um, specialty. It really could depend, but you put, pretty much would have sent additional years training into those other specialties. So in medicine, you're not really hopping from disease states necessarily. Yes, you could be more of a generalist by going into internal medicine or family medicine practice where you know a lot of different topics. Um, but you're not able to necessarily hop between different disease states, hop between different specialties, or become board certified in multiple areas unless you go back and do the training. So it is a little bit different depending on what your interest areas lie in. You know, I am board certified in critical care pharmacy, and it's actually a very broad topic, right? So I do um, allow myself to practice in a lot of different types of fields where um, that flexibility might not be as prevalent in the medicine world. The next question I asked myself was, how accessible are you as a healthcare professional to your patients and your community? And this is gonna be varying you know, degrees of accessibility depending on where you live and what specialty you're in. Um, but for the most part, you know, a lot of people will say that pharmacists are the most accessible healthcare professional in the majority of the United States. Most people live within five miles of pharmacists and most people are able to, you know, make an appointment or talk to their pharmacist pretty easily. And then in the clinic setting, most pharmacists spend, you know, upwards of 30 to 60 minutes talking one-on-one -on -one with a patient. Whereas in medicine, that has become less prevalent of being able to access a physician very easily and being able to spend a lot of time with them. Sometimes you are only going to see your physician for 15 minutes, and then you're going to be talking to the nurse or the pharmacist for a little bit longer for more complex types of patients. So it is something where, you know, depending on what kind of interactions you want, if it is in the community setting, if it is in the clinic setting or if it is in the hospital setting, there's varying degrees of, you know, who you're going to talk to, patient interactions, healthcare professional interactions, or working outside the field. Maybe you want to work for a different type of corporation um, or as well, or more in a leadership role as well. And there's, you know, plenty of opportunities in both fields to do either of those. It just depends on where you see your life going. Now, if you watch this far, I'm going to talk about the best step to take and the most important step to take when you're choosing between pharmacy and medicine nets. Before we get there, I would love if you shared a comment below in the channel and tell us about, you know, did you choose one or the other? Uh, is there a certain step or a certain question you asked yourself to choose between pharmacy and medicine? Please share it in the comments below. Okay, the most important step to take to make your decision when deciding about healthcare professions and what career path to choose, I think the most important step to take is writing down your values statements. And this is exactly why this is the first step in my burnout doctor method of really clarifying your value statements, clarifying why you get up in the morning, what your purpose is. And if you've never done this, especially maybe as a young adult, this is the perfect time to spend some time and dig deep into this. And it's something that I didn't do until I was in my twenties and I had experienced burnout myself. And it's a really great exercise to do so that you get clarity on this before you make decisions about it. The next step I would write down is what do you enjoy most about each of the fields? You know, these should be concrete examples because you've either had time shadowing and volunteering in the areas or you really know what the day-to-day -day life would be in the areas. And what do you enjoy most about each of the fields? Then I would write down what you don't like about each of the fields, you know, the opposite of that. And think about, you know, what are some pros and cons basically in each of the fields? And how does that fit with your personality and what you're looking for in life? Next, of course, I want to get out and actually do those things. If you haven't had shadowing and volunteer experience, get out and do those things. And lastly, I would really think about 
uh, you know, talking to people in the fields, watching other day in the life type of videos. I'll link my day in the life video for critical care pharmacy and for academia pharmacy below as well. So you can kind of see, you know, what is a day in the life? Yes, every day usually looks a little bit different, but you can see, you know, what kind of things you might be getting yourself into with these different healthcare professions. Wow. Thank you so much for watching this video. I can't wait to hear your comments about if you chose a certain healthcare professional field or what question really helped you make this decision. Please comment below and please make sure you're taking action steps by downloading our complimentary burnout starter kit and financial freedom starter kit as well. Until next time, my friends, cultivate joy.